Alrighty. So, yeah, I was doing a little bit of research on basically the ideas behind Newtonian combat tactics. Yeah. And 99.9% .9 of all combat tactics ever designed for airplanes are based on lift, gravity, drag, etc., etc., which all don't apply. Now, the two TV shows that have got this closest to accurate, or the most accurate, I should say, would be Babylon 5 and Battlestar Galactica, the new series of Battlestar Galactica. And basically what it comes down to is this idea, it's just like playing that old 2D uh, game, uh, Asteroids, yeah. where you thrust, you know, you can thrust as fast as you want, but then you let go of the thrust and you just kind of keep going. Right. And that's a problem, because depending on where your target moves, you're obviously going to be able to torque and twist and move around to, find, to, to point at them, but then it's all going to be about what direction you're pointing versus what direction you're moving. Now, I had mentioned before that lateral thrusters will become a big part of that because it's all about how fast you can move sideways to your guns. Because what's going to happen is all the movements and strategy for movements is going to be completely independent of the uh, basically direction that the uh, ship is facing. Now there's two ways to get around that. Um, one, go old school battleship and do broadsides. Now, yeah. The, the reason that they did broadsides wasn't because of the way that ships move, but more just the efficient way of having a really long, narrow ship and then having so many guns all pointed off one side. The other thing with um, you can do is basically just have a lot of thrusters, um, and then basically you don't need the main thruster, the big one, unless you're actually trying to go forwards. So I've been reading up a little bit. It's hard to explain, but the, if you actually Google um, the early well, you kind of, of AI, you're kind of gonna want to always be going forward. It's as far as I'm concerned, you're going to want to use as many ways to move around as possible. And if that's a way to speed up when you're going forward, then that'll be, you know, in a dogfight, that's huge. It, yeah, well, you always want to be moving, absolutely. Right. But whether or not that movement's the right direction. And the problem with, you know, your forward as far as your thrust line um, is concerned is that's also the direction that the enemy's going to be. So if you're going really hard and fast towards the enemy, you've got two problems. One, your center of mass, from their perspective, is not really moving. So that means they can line up a shot on you very, very easily and just shoot you because you're not moving side to side or up or down. You're, very, you're effectively a stationary target if you're just heading directly to somebody. Right, right. right. Um, problem number two is let's say you guys use just enough energy that you dodge each other at the last second. Well, now you're going to have to use a whole bunch of energy to stop, turn around, and come back. And basically, it becomes like a big jousting match. Now, that's... Yeah, but there's okay. that's like that would be like 2D, like a 2D battlefield. That's not going to be... No way. Well... But your goals are still the same, right? He's going to want to be pointing his ship towards you, and you're going to want to point your ship towards him. Yeah, but there's too many there's too many variables as far as direction. You can go any direction, so there's you there's no way that that would ship. there's no way that that will ever actually happen. Like that's ultimately that's the goal of someone. But the goal, like if someone's on your tail, the goal is to get on their tail, and that that no, means see, that you have to do certain anymore. things, you know. In, in space, being on somebody's tail doesn't matter anymore. All I would do is go vertical up and then pitch my nose down and basically be looking the opposite direction that I'm traveling, and now I'm pointed at you. It doesn't matter which direction my ship is moving. Right. I'm pointed directly at you, even while going off in another direction, yeah. and I can take my shot. I, I mean, it's in theory, you describe it, it sounds so simple, but it won't be. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm not saying it's going to be simple. I'm saying these are the basis of it. Um, 
of course you're going to be using your thrusters to move around as much as you possibly can in different yeah different that's what i'm saying there's too many is, variables for it to, to end up the way you're describing well, it, not really though no, because here's here's the thing the bottom line is how fast can you pitch roll and yaw your ship because that's going to determine whether or not you can point your guns at the enemy ship yeah everything else doesn't matter if you can't move and point your guns at the enemy ship now from there it doesn't matter so much how much you're moving I mean obviously you want to be moving so that he doesn't have a clear line of sight and clear track and shot on you but the thing is if you draw the bubbles or the circles around your ship for your weapon range and his weapon range basically the end goal is for you to get into your his weapon it, well each other's weapon ring for lack of a better description as much as possible in order to shoot the enemy unless you're trying to run away and you, you know that's a whole other thing I mean when trying to run away you just go full throttle in a straight direction you just keep on going um, here's another the, here's another thing to keep in mind is like uh, as far as variables go what about like things that can, like asteroids and things to hide behind, things that get in the way, things that force directional changes. And well, and see, that's, there's going to be a couple things. About and will that those one. things be on a plane, or how's, you know what I mean? Well, hopefully not. Hopefully asteroids will be like dimensional objects in 3D and everything, and you can maneuver around them. Um, obviously, you can use them to bluff and hide and play almost like hide-and-go-seek or something like that. Right. Um, is cover. Now that's going to be a little bit different than open combat. Um, but it's still that idea. I mean, think of it this yeah, way. Blaise, if I can Blaze makes a good point. There is no up or down, left or right in space. Right. It's, it's all relative to your own yeah, horizon right. line. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't see the Twitch. Actually, maybe I can see the the chat while I'm not watching a video and that'll save some bandwidth. I can't see who's in it, but I can see that, that there's people in it. Okay. Blaze is anyway. Yeah. Um, anyway. So, yeah, see, and okay, think of it this way. Think of us, uh, be, both you and I, in a room with, we'll just say paintball guns, just to keep it nonviolent. I've got a paintball gun pointed at you, you've got a paintball gun pointed at me. I can sidestep and walk towards you and move backwards from you. We'll just keep things 2D for now. I can move around on the ground as much as I want while still facing you. If I'm still facing you, right, but you'll have changes, matter. but you'll have changes in speed and other effects, you know what I mean? Sure. If you're and if you're walking yeah. backwards or walking to the right. side or you'll you'll trip or fall and there's, well, there's all kinds of other, that's what I'm saying, there's too many. In space, but we'll take that part out of the analogy. But the idea that I'm trying to <laughs> well, is that... It, well, as, as, a, as a means of describing, you know, something that can happen, I think that yeah. you can actually trip and fall in, skate, in space. If you were, for instance, to run into an asteroid that you didn't see on your right side. That's because true, you're that looking true. at your target and just moving to the right. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, but what I, what I was more trying to get out of this analogy is the idea that I can continuously point my gun at you. Now, of course, there's trajectories to consider um, with lateral movements while trying to aim and everything else. But I'm just talking point blank specifics. It's not like in flying an airplane where I need to fly in a certain direction and then try and maneuver so that I can point my guns at you. No, right. moving around in space or on the field or in a room is completely independent of my ability to target you and point my weapons at you. Right? Right. So it doesn't matter if you're quote unquote on my tail because all that happens is I flip around 180 degrees while my momentum is going wherever and I can still shoot at you. Right, but that takes time and flipping around I believe if you're I don't know. I don't know how the ships will compensate for that. If you're if you're thrusting just to flip around, that will actually change your direction. It should at least. Shouldn't. No. Well, it depends on if you're using your main thruster or you're using. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It depends how the thrusters work and if you'll have to compensate for it or if it'll compensate on its own or. There's a video um, on the internet somewhere 
and it was basically a concept pre 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 alpha of the AI fighting each other and there was like a couple hornets and a couple vanduuls and a carrier all kind of floating around shooting at each other um, and they show it pretty good um, basically what's going to happen where you know you can have your main thrust and then what about something like the cutlass with like a top turret that can rotate 360 degrees well, and see, and that's another thing. I mean, that gets into your and, tactics. And be, yeah, you know, and be controlled by someone completely different. The pilot's well, just got to focus on flying, you know. Yeah. Well, and that basically means that instead of having your target, well, I think on the Cutlass, though, you've got your top turret, but then most of your guns are still fixed on the wings as well. I'm not sure about that, or not really wings, but on the sides. Because not all your weapons are on that turret. Right. But in that case... You just basically, I mean, for the pilot's perspective, um, it kind of goes back to the idea of Ender's Game, where you have to completely ignore your earlier perception and give yourself a new frame of reference. In this case, you have to think of the top of your ship as now being the new face of the ship, and you always want to face your enemy. Now, with a turret, it makes things a little bit different because the turret can maneuver and target and shoot at its own desires. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how it all meshes together and works in game mm -hmm. when they release the dogfighting module. Yeah, we'll we'll see a lot more with that. Right. But yeah, the, I think the, the the test video that they showed, um, they were flying around in this Vanduul sky, uh -huh. and um, basically he would go, you know. What is that thing on the top of the ship? That's the turret that I was talking about. Here, I'll go back down and show you. One um, second. And then I like think the I think we need. I'm a little I'm a little crunched for time, Mike. I think we need to move on to. Uh, let's talk about piracy a little bit. Okay. So, as far as piracy is concerned, one of the things I was looking at or thinking about, um, it depends on really how far you can go with the immersion. Um, and I know you're talking like you can go pretty damn far. And it also depends on where ships are manufactured. And it was just a random passing idea I had. But what if we go in, somebody goes in as a semi-honest business person or whatever, saying, yeah, I want to buy a Constellation. The guy says, okay, great. We'll manufacture you a Constellation. We'll hear, have it here for next week. Here's how you get up to that turret right here. This little seat will take you up there eventually. Pretty cool. And then you can send out a raiding party and say, okay, well, we know the constellations are being manufactured at this planet, so we'll just kind of hang out over here where we know the ship will come out and then head, you know, to the delivery point. Right. Then you just intercept the ship, capture it, and you've got a ship. Um, the other thing would be, like, it, it really depends on how much we can manipulate stuff like that. and Or even just, like, you know, knowing where the planet is that manufactures weapons, and then just wait for a couple cargo ships to be going in and out, and then just start grabbing those cargo ships. Yeah, there's there's a few different ways that we'll be able to go about that. Um, cargo ships obviously would be the biggest target for pirates. Well, and uh, the other thing is, I mean. Well, a, a lot of it depends on some of the stuff we don't really know yet, like how the alignment system is going to completely work and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, if I destroy a ship and there's no survivors, in theory there's no witnesses, which means in theory my alignment shouldn't change because nobody knows, right? Right. So, um, yeah, that makes if, sense. If that's the case... Um, as long as we're, we're careful to overpower all of our enemies completely. And right, don't go into a anything. losing battle, right? Not only that, but just make sure there's no witnesses. Yeah. Like, I mean, you surrender. Well, if there are any witnesses. Nice. Come stand up. You surrender? That's nice. Come stand up here next to a wall. Oh, yeah, bang, you're dead. Right. Well, yeah, it's going to be a cold universe, you know. That's the reality. For pirates, at least. Yeah. Pirate's life. YOLO. <laughs> um, but the problem I see is 
So is that the AH gun? What do you mean the AH gun, Blaze? I think he just means so that is a gun. Yeah, that's a gun. Um, lost my train of thought, but it's coming back. Sorry. Maybe. Oh, yeah. The the idea of being able to track that things are stolen or not, and then how much or how strong of an underground piracy circle there is, how strong the black market is. And like, I know if you look on the map, there are planets that are set to be unlawful or like wobbly or wobbless or uncontrolled or whatever. Right. So I'm assuming that even if it's only one little sector of space, piracy is ignored, so to speak. And then of course it's more of just a, you know, every man for himself in that sense. So, and I'm assuming there's not going to be much, if any, honor amongst thieves. So, I would expect that one pirate organization is probably going to take over an area, and then you either have to give them a good reason for them to let you live, or something. But I don't know. Yeah, there's going to be, we'll have pirate controlled space that we can hang out in, definitely. There's going to be, like, huge pirate organizations. My organization is actually pretty small compared to, like, some of the bigger pirate organizations that I've actually been in contact with a few of them. Mm hmm. So. Well, and one of the things I'm questioning about all that, too, I mean, it, it kind of gets into the economy of things, too, about how well they will be able to uh, defend the transports. I mean, it's not viable that they're going to be able to send out a squadron of hornets to defend every single transport going in and out of every system. Blaze wants to know who the other guy is that's talking. That is Mike. And that's he, me. He's the guy that did the voice acting for uh, for that video that got MVP posts on the on the Star Citizen forums yesterday. Yep. Which was that a huge surprise. Too much. Pretty damn awesome. Yeah, it actually kind of was. I wasn't really expecting to be that kind of a. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't think of a good word to go with that. Uh, I couldn't be accepting. I don't know. I I figured we were just gonna do that and it would just be like, yeah, maybe a few people will watch it, but nobody will really <laughs> like that. I don't get like five or ten views on YouTube and that's it. But that's yeah, pretty cool. I think we're up to like two hundred and something right now. All right. Yeah, I was thinking about doing another character or something like that. I haven't figured it all out yet, but I don't know. There's just an idea. You should definitely um, do another character. Yeah. I'll, we should I'll do lots of some. characters. We're going to be doing more of those videos, by the way. Yeah. So there will be more. Yeah. I've got four days of work coming up starting tomorrow, so I'll have time to think about it. At least I'll have to work a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. Excellent. Um... Yeah. As far as other stuff with the pirates, I don't know, like, it really depends on how stealthily we can get in and out of places and then getting to the different trade lanes and stuff like that. Blaze Finn wants to talk to you, Mike. Alright. About some stuff. Okay. About some stuff. Um, so my um, YouTube channel is Icarus Above. And I'm not sure if you've linked to it before or not. I can find it. You can always send me a message there. You can message I people agree. on Skype. Uh, yeah, yeah, he has Skype. You want to write your Skype your Skype name in the chat so he can message you? Uh, uh, just do it through YouTube. Because I check my YouTube more than I check my Skype. Uh, uh. So anyways, since we were talking about pirates and stuff, yes, there will be pirate safe space. And yes, there will be people who try to come into pirate space. <laughs> people that we get to kill. <clears throat> yeah, yeah I, there's going to be a lot of potential there now. It's getting into the bigger picture with Operation Pitchfork, one of the things I was thinking of, I mean, for all intents and purposes, we're probably going to lose. I don't even think we're going to make it to Orion. We might, but there's that one... No way, dude. We'll, hey, we'll make it, man. We'll make it. 
there's that one system before Orion where I guess it's like a major military installation and I don't know whatever's there the um, Viking the Viking blood in me tells me it, it'll be a piece of cake no problem <laughs> I think it'll be a hell of a good fight. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Oh, man, it's going to be so much fun. But, Holy crap. Yeah. For anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, we're talking about Operation Pitchfork. It's a... like a big event. It's happening at the end of the beta. We're invading Vanduul space to exact our revenge. That pretty much sums it up, right? Yeah, pretty much. It's going to be like thousands of players involved in this. It's huge. It's epic. It more talking because I have questions. Yeah, just message me there first, and then I'll give you my Skype info. I just don't want to spread that around too much. So just message me on YouTube first, or on Google Plus, or whatever first, and then we'll go from there. Um. Yeah, it's, well, there's so much there. Now, one of the other things I wanted to talk Man, about... Man, I love my cutlass. I can't wait till they redo it. <laughs> I smell bacon well, I being made in my kitchen. I don't know if they're going to completely <sighs> redo it or what. But... Such a good, pleasant smell. Yeah, I do like bacon. You better. <laughs> um, I had bacon on my breakfast. If you're going to fly with me, you better like bacon. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't know what else. Um, I'm working on videos and stuff, but other than that. Yeah, we'll have more stuff coming out real soon here. But as yeah, soon as possible. Send me, a, send me a message on the YouTube, like on my YouTube channel. And then, like, or give me your Skype name and stuff like that, and then I'll add you as a friend and stuff like that. But yeah, I just don't, I don't give that out to everybody kind of a thing. That's my thing. So, just even having a single layer of protection. I mean, I don't know. It's just, I don't know, maybe I'm just being weird about it, but. Alright, guys. Uh, I well, I think I think that's going to have to do it for today, because I think my company just pulled up. So, uh, we will continue this discussion another time. Sound good, Mike? For the fork. For the fork. Thank you, uh, Mike, for coming. And thank problem. you for all of the work that you did with your voice acting on that video. Yeah, we problem. couldn't have gotten MVP without you, man. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it was a group effort. Yeah, definitely. I did like half. I, I, well, I did maybe about half the script or so. Yeah. Just because I did all my character stuff. But yeah. you guys and, and gave me the, the first half. Well, yeah. You gave me the interview side, which I wasn't even originally you did a, You did a fantastic so. job. Everybody did a fantastic yeah. job. Knight's Wrath did a fantastic job. Everybody did amazing. Yeah, yeah. We got MVP. Woo! Well. <laughs> Boom, baby. All right. Uh, yeah, that's it for today. Um, All right. Oh, a big special thank you to CIG, too. You guys are awesome. Yes, Love you of guys. Of course. Without them, this wouldn't all happen. Definitely not. Yeah. Really, really, CIG and Titali are the ones that have inspired me to do all this and start this, this big project that I'm trying to do here. All right. So thanks, everybody, for coming. Oh, I was just going to say one last thing. Definitely check out the AI um, pre-alpha video that they did. Um, I'm not sure where it is on the internet. I just kind of randomly found it. But it is, you know, from Robert Space Industries or Chris Roberts. that They did a bit of a initial um, AI test, play test in combat. So It's probably on their YouTube channel. Probably on their YouTube channel. Yeah, on YouTube channel. And uh, if you're new, make sure you follow me. I stream every day. But that's it for today, guys. I'll be back as soon as possible with more Star Citizen and more other stuff. All right. Thanks for coming, guys.